What a wonderful variety of jobs I get to do, huh? Here we've got a uh, E510 model uh, VFD, variable frequency drive. It converts uh, single phase in and um, three phase out. Uh, fully programmable uh, up to, what did I read on the thing, like 600 hertz I think it was, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess that's our speed control knob. I think it's a motor driver, effectively. Um, but uh, this one doesn't turn on. I've just plugged it in, and we should be able to turn this to on. Dead. Nothing on screen, buttons non-responsive. So what have we got? Looks like um, a few screws around the outside. Might be in as easy as that. So with those loose, should be able to lift that off. Getting caught over this side. What's over there? You can see the wiring to the main switch tucks under the edge so it was stopping it pulling up so you kind of have to come across first. And then uh -huh. We have a flex cable coming down to the PCB there from uh, from the button panel on top. So I'll unplug that. It has kind of a, not an RJ45, but I suppose it could actually be RJ45. Yeah. So how does this all go together? Um, we've got, here's our main switch. And that uh, comes in from down there. Now, is that just a junction block? I think that's a junction block. I don't think it does anything other than pass through from one side to the other. So we'll um, need to check our switch first, I suppose. And then uh, do we have mains coming in on this side? Probe down on here. And we get 233. So that's good. Switch is working. So how are we going to get all this apart? Unplugging it first, probably a good idea. Um, I can see what looks like maybe a, this, this board up, there's an upright board here. Kind of looks like a power supply type board. Uh, this is the brains of the whole thing. So we've got couple of screws there we'll get that off um, unless that whatever that's sitting on comes off separately I don't think it does let's start with getting that board off now it may have um, charged up some caps in the process so we want to be careful of that hopefully uh, Looks like two screws holding that on. There must be some kind of interconnect. There has to be something connecting this to the rest of the system. I wonder if it's just a push fit or nothing. Oh, that's interesting. So there's nothing connecting to this board. What the? I think to make things easier, I need to get this outer case off as well. So I can see this is this is screwed down, but behind there. So we have to take our um, have to take our front panel off. We'll disconnect the feed to and from the master switch. And we'll have to remove the mains cable as well. Um, so I don't have the room to just swing this up out the way and leave it half attached. <laughs> and that allows us to get to... What have we got? We've got a fan on the side here. Uh, and we've got... Uh, <laughs> a couple of screws in the side of the plastic. So... 
get those off. Seems to be what's holding our casing on. Along with some big metal heat sinky type screws underneath that. Nothing smells burnt, which is a good sign. Kinda wants to come. This looks like some kind of locking screw. A little tab coming out that prevents the case from sliding up over it. What's that all about? Uh, there's a tag sticking out here. <laughs> it all falls apart when you take it apart. It should be able to thread itself back in, I suppose. The screw that holds it doesn't need to be all the way in, though. I wonder what that does. Is it kind of some kind of uh, shut off? Does it? It's almost like a switch because there's a trace, a half circle trace on the board, and then the screw goes into into ground effectively. Maybe it um, stops it running with the cover off. I don't know. Strange little thing. Um, well, I don't see. Oh, other than that. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a wire here that's not, probably should poke out the top and go somewhere. It's just an earth wire though. Um, and then I've got, oh, that, hiding under there. There we go, so that is a plug, goes on the side of that. So now I'm going to have to <laughs> jimmy that up and here's hoping that maybe it'll do something, I don't know. I can't just leave it flapping around like that though. I must have put the cover back on. What a shambles. Alright, plugging it in. And it's still dead. Well, <laughs> we proved that it doesn't work. So now we want to check if we have actually got power here, and of course they've put all of the red wires at the bottom. So we can't just run around these top pins and have a look. There is a lot of separate traces coming off of some of those black wires though. So I don't though I don't think that'll all be negative. Or ground as such. But um, here's here's a capacitor here. So if we were to probe from, I probably should make sure it's not uh, not charged first of all. Could be 400 volts. Now nah, she's pretty pretty discharged. So if we were to probe from ground, actually is that lead ground? No. Ooh, interesting. There's some of these black wires here. No, it appears to be totally separate wherever that goes. So you can see down here, there's that ring trace, and then there's the screw in the middle. And uh, when the case goes on, it's got this little tab that sticks out like it's sitting in the case like that, more more vertical, and then as it comes down, it slips in under there and you tighten that down. And it's almost like maybe it's some kind of lock that defeats or allows something else to function once the cover's over. So maybe maybe something won't work if I left that off. So I'm just going to pop that there and screw it back down and then we can start taking measurements under the cover and um, 
it's labeled just on the trace here it says TM1 so I don't know what that is Tamp tamper proof one tamper one I don't know <laughs> but I'll screw that back on and at least we know where we stand and we know everything's gonna work so you all know how a switch mode power supply works yet your mains come in and it gets rectified into large capacitor um, and then it has a, a switching device that switches that across a transformer to give you your lower output now on the main board we've got our mains coming in there's our bridge rectifier here's our main filter capacitors and um, that's a large power resistor that could even be across the bank to discharge it after you unplug it um, possibly and then from there it goes on to this sub board and here's our switching transformer so this board is our power supply for uh, the control board and I guess all the controls down on the bottom there as well so we need to find out is this getting power is this the problem we have power in but are they even charged up perhaps we start with that we'll take a measurement off the bridge rectifier and that should tell us everything we need to know about the primary right so we're going to first check that we have got our AC all the way up to the bridge and our AC is the top left and bottom right as far as I can tell just by looking at it there's our 236 and then see if we have our DC on the output and it's just a bit of flux in the way but there we go 320 rectified DC volts so now we can check uh, this is where it comes in from after being rectified we've got our positive and negative right there and that comes up to the primary of our transformer and our main switching transistor is on this side have a prod there we should have our positive and negative don't slip and jump across them blow the ass out of your probe <laughs> now I do see it marked on the board here minus 15 plus 15 uh, VCC and a ground so I suppose we could just see if that's if that's uh, present. If we have our 15 there, and a VCC, nothing there. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, so our plus 15 and our minus 15 are flickering all over the place, like it's like it's trying to start up, but it's uh not able to I'll just show you that there so you can see I've got a scale across the top and uh, you'll be able to see when I probe on there that scale is flickering all over the place because it can't achieve full voltage so that's good that means either our feedback is bad or maybe I've seen that effect when the rectifying diode is uh, bad because it can't we can't generate enough so we'll unplug that and we'll just check make sure our capacitors are uh, discharged to a safe handling point 260 is still a bit hot we'll get it down into the you know low 20s and so forth we want it to be almost gone really we want to be able to test other devices in the circuit we don't want a lot of stray charge floating around we'll give erroneous readings So let's have a look at uh, uh, possible reasons for this. So obviously, if it's trying to, um, you know, it's doing its pulse width modulation, it's trying to achieve a voltage 
uh, via the feedback uh, system which is optocouplers in 90% of the cases and um, and it's not achieving a voltage it should uh, expect so um, we could see that the plus and minus 15 were flickering a lot we didn't have anything on this one marked AVCC and we've got our A ground which is our reference, our ground reference so um, let's have a look at because I think that's ground, yeah so that's ground so I've got three diodes here um, let's see if we can find out where they go and we've got, um, what have we got, this pin, so this is the secondary side of our um, transformer, so up here we've got our primary winding uh, which is switched across a MOSFET here um, and then we get our output across here so we've got one output here, we've got a diode to rectify that we've got one output here, one diode to rectify that and we've got another diode off this one We've got a couple of spare pins. I don't know if they're doing anything on the other side yet. Um, so if we go, see if we can't find where the minus and plus 15 come from. I wonder if it's one of these diodes. Oh, yeah. So that diode is going to a capacitor there. It ends up at the plus 15. And if we go down to this diode. Does that go to our minus 15? No, it must generate somewhere else. Maybe a diode on the other side. I've got a... Hmm, a DP15 here and one marked OC, so I'm not sure what that's about. Um, now we've got our AVCC. And that comes off the end of this one. So we had fluctuating voltages off of uh, plus and minus 15 volts and nothing on the AVCC. So let's go into diode mode and we've got anode here and cathode over here. So this diode stripe is on, on the right side there. And if we probe that now I'm seeing a short, a dead short circuit across that diode. And it may have got hot because I don't know if you can see on camera, but this has got a um, um, conformal coating, coating sprayed all over this. Um, around this diode, it's, it's discolored and, um, yeah, it's discolored and starting to lift off the board. I'm starting to think maybe that got quite hot and... It, um, is now shorted. So, what's our primary voltage now? Four volts. We can stick our fingers all over it quite happily. I saw a discoloration down here, but I don't think that's anything to do with it. So, we need to replace that diode. We need to find out what it is. Let's scrape all the glue off it. And the number appears to be PJ2, oh, wait, no, PJ8236. Let's find a data sheet for that one. And so you're on the same page with me. I'll show you that measurement across the diode again. That's a short. Whereas a good diode would look like this. About half a volt drop. I guess before we get too carried away, we should remove it from the circuit and double check. But I'm pretty confident that it's going to be bad. A little bit of glue underneath it as well. So we'll check it out of circuit. And we can see it is shorted. So we go to our favorite search engine and we plug in PJ8 no 8236 I really should check this under the microscope shouldn't I that's what it's there for my eyeballs are only so grand 
Oh, there's a big crack through it as well. Well, that would have been a dead giveaway. Yeah, PJ8236. It's almost split in half under the microscope. <laughs> PJ8236 data sheet. And this is how you find data sheets for anything that you need. Sometimes it takes a bit of refining, <laughs> but you get there in the end. So what is this thing? It's going to be a generic rectifier diode. Um, sometimes you don't hit the exact thing you're after. There's a lot of stuff that excludes that number. That may not even be the number because there is a second number on there. The other number is FR20. Ah, fast discrete rectifier. But do we get a good data sheet on it? Well, that says 2 amp. Oh, here we go. FR20. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, not the package I want, but uh, if it's the same, 2 amp. Um, and what do we got there? 50 volt peak reverse. Okay, let's let's see if there's any other results that look a bit better than what we're looking at there. Data sheet. That's the same one. I mean, it's likely they just changed the package and um, oh, keep with the same part number. I don't know. I think if I was to just stick a generic two amp rectifier diode in there we would be okay another way you could do it would be to go to your favorite part supplier and just plug the number into there and see if you get a result because often you can get crossovers and that so nothing there what about FR20 uh, not a lot going on there either so at this point we need to make an educated guess. Once upon a time FR20 was in a round package. Now we have a square package with FR20 on it. Okay what I'm going to do is chuck in what I have in stock is a B2100 diode which I believe is a 2 amp rectifier there we go looks kind of much like what we've got and if we have a look down here 2 amps um, 100 volt reverse which is more than more than what this one probably is um, yeah I reckon we plug that in and I'd put money on it uh, it will work just fine those of you who follow along may be acutely aware that this particular diode I'm going to use is the one that I used to fix the Bose Base Module 700. Now, I've just scraped away the glue that was holding this down because there's a little uh, bump in the middle of the new one which may cause it to not sit flat on the board. So, uh, let's just clean up the pads. Um, now it's it's nicer to uh, solder these back into place rather than hot air because um, you don't really want to pump hot air onto your board continuously or if you can avoid it. So we will pop a dollop of solder at one end and mount that into place. Remember the line, the cathode, goes up the top there. Heat that up and let it sit. There we go. And uh, get that round there. In the way of the camera. Flood it with solder. Excellent. Get a bit more on this side. Wonderful. What an easy fix, eh? We'll take a measurement across our new diode and we see that it is uh, point 
1.17. This is an ultra fast rectifier diode, however, um, so that should be fine. It's it's I think it's better to have a quick recovery. The only instance I had an issue with that is a recent job um, where it was a it was a high voltage 600 volt reverse. And um, it was it was it was generating about 300 volts, rectifying 300 volts. But yeah, in that one, it was um, a half volt drop. And having this faster one in place, it just it just did not uh, it did not work. It didn't accept it for whatever reason. Now I always worry about stuff like this. Like I thought, oh, I could plug it in and just test the voltage rails there, and then I could put the control board on. And then I thought, well, if it's not engineered to be safe without the control board. You know, what if it starts, you know, random, randomly operating stuff and going haywire and blowing things up? You know, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't do that. Um, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it all together. It'll either light up or it won't. Um, I think it's safe to say. So, plugging it in. Okay, that was probably frequency 49.29. It's alive. <laughs> okay, so what do these buttons do? Um, obviously it's not in run mode. And obviously fun is function, not fun. No. Ah. Forward. Yeah, okay. It's doing stuff. That's all I care about. Um, if I push run... Ooh, fans turned on. So if I go run again. Oh, it's ramping up, is it? Well, the knob doesn't adjust anything. And for the grand finale. It's flashing its lights and doing its thing. Hey, we did it. And you can too. It's that simple. We run. And stop. And it must slowly wind down, I guess. Well, thanks for watching. That was pretty cool, huh? Hope you learned something, and um, see you next time.